your angels are speaking to you. Do you hear them? Welcome to The Calling of Light with author and empathic spiritual tarot reader Anne-Marie O'Dell. The Calling of Light offers direct, empathic insight and relatable spiritual topics, interviews with special spiritual guests, and straight talk call-in readings. Kick back and enjoy Freeform Spirit Tea with Anne-Marie, the way you like it best when you want to simplify. Here is your host, Anne-Marie O'Dell. Amy Zerner is a renowned collage artist and fashion designer and has been selling her unique spiritual arts, one-of-a-kind jackets, coats, and caftans exclusively through Bergdorf Goodman for 20 years. She uses an applique palette of luxurious materials, hand-painted and dyed fabrics, vintage textiles, trimmings, antique beads and embellishments to make her worlds of wonder rich with layers of meaning and imagination. Amy's tapestry collages appear throughout the 40 books and best-selling oracles she has co-created with her husband, author Monty Farber, with more than 2 million copies in print around the world in 12 languages. She designs jewelry, detailed amulets, with symbolism and her unique healing vision and artistic insights into ancient wisdom add an inspiring dimension and mythological magic to all of her creations. Zerner's pioneering and unique artistic style was recognized by the National Endowment for the Arts with a major fellowship in the category of painting. I want to welcome our guest today, and her name is Amy Zermer, and her husband is Monty Barber. Your art, from what I was reviewing um, on a video, you described it as goddess psychic psychedelic art <laughs> and it landscapes of the soul. What came first for you? When you were a girl, younger than the girl you are now, what you start out with, was it fabric, tarot? What, what did you start out as? Because you're a phenomenal artist and you're so versatile. Thank you so much. You know, I've always been pretty much the same. And luckily I came from a family of artists. My mother was an artist. My sister was an artist, my grandfather was an artist, so I was always very encouraged. But I feel like when I look at my drawing, childhood drawings that luckily a relative saved some of them. They were the same with stars and moons and princesses um, and beautiful gowns. You know, I'm a fashion designer too. Always mystical. I mean, my mother, I had a very spiritual connection with my mother and she would do ESP experiments with me when I was little where I would think of a number or she would think of a color and we would work psychically, not not having studied it, but it was kind of natural and she was a very intuitive person. So I feel like I was encouraged to do all the things that I, I love and that I'm pretty much the same and um, grew up in nature, which inspires my work so much to feel the connection with the animals and the flowers and the cosmos what the things that I portray in my work but I guess I actually got into the tarot when I uh, was in college 1969 1970 I was in art school and um fellow explorers girlfriends we we found a book Eden Gray's first book back then uh, which was kind of a simple approach to the tarot just I, I vividly remember laying in bed and and leafing through the pages not knowing that I was going to do my own deck, but I just was very attracted to astrology. One of my art instructors, his wife taught astrology. I started taking lessons. And uh, so all these things intrigued me. And when I met Monty in 1974, my husband, he was studying comparative religions, and which we just grew together in our interest. I was studying astrology, so he got into astrology. 
but in art school, I always want a mixture of, of mediums. I always worked with lots of textures and paint, and I wanted to portray life in all its dimensions. So I one day went into the closet with scissors. <laughs> in those days, we had just started thrift shopping in a big way. I live in a, a very interesting artistic community. Our thrift shops were always full of fantastic things. And so in the 60s, I started collecting vintage clothing from the 20s. Back then, it truly was vintage from the 20s and 30s and 40s. And those things, if old movies of those times influenced me. So I think I'm just, you know, I take in so many of these things that I'm attracted to. I'm a treasure hunter and started working with the fabric in the 70s and working with goddesses. I started studying about Ishtar and, and the primal goddesses that were were the first, you know, create, creation goddesses. And I, I love that concept and it helped empower me. We were into feminism in those days. So I was part of the hippie movement, part of tie-dyeing, beating our clothes, putting those all together in a fine art way. And then when I was approached by US Games, I guess it was 1988 or 89 to do a deck. I, I ultimately didn't do it with them. I did it with St. Martin's, the Enchanted Tarot. Um, it was just, I was just ripe for that to delve into 78 archetypes of life. And I, I know it's so popular now for, artists to uh, you know be very upfront with exploring that journey you know that's in the tarot because all of life is there but you know what amy to me as a tarot card reader there's a lot of beautiful art out there but not always art that resonates with me yes and i find that your artwork has a very special connection as you said I've been using, what did you say the deck I'm using is? The Little Reminders Law of Attraction deck that must have come out maybe 15 years ago. I... Yes, and I've been using it 15 years then. <laughs> I've been using it 14 maybe, but I am, I'm on my third or fourth deck now. And like <laughs> I said, I, I use tarot cards the same way I do cars. I, I, I love tarot art, but for me, they're old friends. Yeah. And once you have read with them, they become a part of you. And so your deck has been my way of starting readings and ending readings. And then in between, I use the old writer weight. Mm -hmm. But I find that it's extremely um, resonating with me, my energy. And your artwork has, and, and it just has good, solid, almost like the writer deck psychologically clicks your art clicks thank you so much i i it's very rich you know with colors and, and because it's made of fabrics it has a lot of textures and a lot of detail and i love that and it's handmade i mean personally i don't like digital art because maybe many times it doesn't have the heart in it i i do feel that magic comes through the hands and the handiwork and the love, you know, it's like making a, a wonderful dinner to feed your soul. And it heals me as I make it. So hopefully it has that healing art. But I think as a reader, you want to have that richness that speaks to you in the imagery. And I appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. And my husband, we collaborate on the oracles that we design and he writes the words and I do the artwork. But we collaborate maybe a little differently because I always do the art first and then he writes about it. So we both kind of like kind of like writing a song for some people. Some people start with the melody, other people start with the words. Music, um, yeah. yeah, and and I was gonna say I began reading in 1970. Mm -hmm. So that's when I discovered Tarot in a in a French gift shop in <laughs> 1970. So um so we've been on the journey the same amount of time. You look very yes, young. we have been. See we you. have been, and uh, you were the kind of girl I was always jealous, sick of in college. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you are in a creative passion? What happens 
to is it at three o'clock in the morning is it just hits you like a like a crazy woman in the shower what happens well i i think it's like being an athlete although i'm not athletic at all but i'm very disciplined with with my work i have a studio i walk into my studio it's a sacred oh. space it has the energy of everything i've created there so i, I when I talk to people about their creative space, it's very important to have all your stuff. And, you know, it it's a ritual, really. And and to me, it's where I like to be. So obviously, that's why I'm so prolific, because I love it so much. I put a lot of love into it. It feeds me as I make it. I'm always full of ideas. So my I have a very large studio with all my bins and boxes of things I've collected. Those are my raw materials. I kind of surround myself with intuitively picking, you know, what I need for this particular piece. For the tarot, I actually laid out pieces in suits. Um, so I did all are, this. Are, are, you, are you an organized artist? I mean, are all these things in, in organized boxes and things? Or is it just all over? No, they're organized. You know, there's sky, there's trees, there's animals oh. to a certain extent. I never organized enough because um, there's so much stuff. But, you know, I need that stuff. Right. <laughs> my collection, that's my treasure chest. But uh, in the tarot, I did the swords first because I wanted to get those out of the way, you know, get the conflicted cards out of the way. They turned out to be some of the, the most beautiful because we learned from those, right? I, I mean, I was younger. I did these in 1988. So, um, you know, we, we mature with all of our life experiences. And sometimes you don't want to face the more difficult aspects of life. But that's what the beauty of the tarot. Mm -hmm. It helps you embrace it and face it and understand it and understand it in the outside world and in your inner world. So to me, it's always this diary kind of concept. My work it explains where I'm at now. It feels the pulse, the universal pulse of, of what's going on in the collective because we're influenced whether it's astrological, you know, by the energies or uh, the growth of, of our person, uh, the culture, you know, that we're in, you know, and it's a very interesting time that we're in now. I, I designed a couple of oracles over the pandemic because I was going to ask. Yeah, you know, I had the time and the uh, the inspiration. I did the Wild Goddess Oracle because. Ah. Feeling a little trapped as an Aries, we don't like that. We don't like. Mm -hmm. to, so I wanted to feel wild. I wanted to tap into the energy that I could, and um, I, I always feel it's coming through me. Right? It's really a channeling kind of experience, and I think Monty writes that way too. You you're in your sacred space, your studio. You allow what supposed to come through in that moment, and it's an adventure. I don't sketch. At anything ahead of time that would be boring for me to just kind of fulfill a sketch I let it come through me and that's like um you're that's, totally spontaneous yeah and me you know maybe that's the Aries in me we like something new all the time we like to be in the moment and just act right without too much preconception so right. I, I like that I found the art form that allows me to do that it's a lot of cutting and piecing, you know, not to say it's easy. There's a lot of tedious aspects to what I've invented as my art form because it's all sewn together. It's pieced together. It's, everything is in its right place. To me, that's, that's very calming. You know? so, so when you create tarot cards and you're creating the design for the cards, you're, you're creating the tapestry first. Is that correct? Yes. And then I I allow the story to come through, but it's, you, it's not articulated until Monty writes about it. But he sees the whole story. It's a very wonderful collaboration that way. It sounds like a real soulmate um, collaboration. Totally. Totally. We've been together 47 years. And, um, well, that's totally a soulmate collab. Yeah. So when you're finished, then, do you take a picture of that tapestry? Yeah. yeah. And what kind of camera do you use for something like that? Because they're so colorful and rich. 
Um, you know, Monty's the Aquarian gear master. So, you know, I uh, also do fashion. So he's learned to photograph my models and wearing my clothes. He photographs all my artwork. It's evolved over the years, you know, as we've learned, but we do everything ourselves. We're our own agent, we're our own lawyer, we're our own um, art director. <laughs> we wow. like to we like to have skills. Sometimes we've been forced to learn skills. Um, but, you know, I didn't start out being a fashion designer. I, I The opportunity presented itself, so I went for it. And now I'm in the most luxurious store in the world, which is Bergdorf Goodman. Oh, really? Yeah. What is the name of it? Bergdorf Goodman. There's one, only one Bergdorf Goodman. It's owned by Neiman Marcus, but it's, it's a luxury department store. That was my first store. That's my only store for 22 years. And, and where just, is that? It's in New York City. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I'm so, saying sometimes you don't know exactly how you're going to do something. But if you throw yourself into it, you learn how to do it. And it, it, it makes you a more whole human being. To, I, I think people should, should learn new things all the time. It keeps you young. It keeps you interested. It helps you understand how the world works in, some, in many dimensions in business, the creative process. And there's always new tools that you have to learn. But I brought this up because you, you talked about cameras. There are always Monty shopping for a new camera today. So, <laughs> you know, it evolves. You know, it didn't used to be digital. We used to have to take film to the store right to get developed that's how long i've been doing <laughs> so the clothing that i have seen that you create is very flowing very oh, yeah. goddess like right and and the old styles of some of your clothing i used to see the older styles had almost taro type yes. um, work on them but the ones i'm seeing now seem to be more velvets and and flowing fabrics without the embellishment yeah. would that be correct yes you're very observant so in the beginning i i designed a few pieces for myself to wear to my shows or i would i started showing my wall pieces and galleries and my original pieces but it was always so hard to describe what i did it's mixed media fabric collage tapestry so i i put my art on the back of my jacket, right. so I could just say, this is what I do, you know, instead of making a long story about it. So um, I had a handful of them. And that, those are my favorite that have my artwork on them because it's a real piece of art. And uh, I ran into an old friend. She said, I love these. I work at Bergdorf Goodman now, and I think the buyer should see these. And anyhow, they took them right away. I had just ones I made for myself at that point. So I was thrust into <laughs> into this evening department. And over the years, because I've been there for 22 years, you know, once or the first time this woman said, I love this jacket, I want to buy it, but can you take the artwork off of it? Oh. And I, I was like, oh. I, uh, you know, Did you slap her? <laughs> no, no, I did it. I <laughs> wanted the sale, right? And I wanted the sale for the salesperson. So. I found a way to do a bunch of new styles that were still me, that still had my Amy Turner signature your look. Your flow, your flow. The flow, the goddess, the, the collage of, of fabrics and textures and embellishments, but not as elaborate maybe as some of the others. Of course, I love when a customer does like my total art. And we'll be right back with part two with Spirit Tea with Amy Zerner. A tarot time travel through lace and collage. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hi, my name is Anne Marie O'Dell, and thank you for inviting me in for tarot and coffee. I offer 37 plus years of accurate, honest tarot channeling. Spirit comes through me as a feeling, an inner knowing. 
I call the angel frequency. As you say your first name, I close my eyes and shuffle my well-worn card as I go into a deep calm. By phone, Skype, or Zoom, contact me at thecallingoflight.com. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's not not excited excited for for summer summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's having having a hard time time landing a job and getting back on his feet? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I I am hunger in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. And we're back with The Calling of Light on Own Times Radio, Part 2. I want to mention, I've been using Amy Zerner and Monty Farber's deck, Little Reminders, Law of Attraction Cards, for years. My well-worn deck has taken on the patina of lots of seasoned tarot readers when they really get attached and love a certain deck, worn edges and faded, beautiful images of Amy's are just filled with really cool energy. I also want to tell you their new deck is the Intuition Oracle published by Sterling, and it just came out. And the deck that's coming out in October is The Art of Affirmations by Red Feather. All right, let's get back to that interview. It seems to me that you and I come from an embellishment era. You know, I remember so much detail on paintings and drawings and, and, and tapestries. I remember having my old hippie apartments filled with antique tapestries from, from the Victorian era. I was all about tapestries. And, and then later on, it seemed to go into my tarot cards Mm -hmm. that, that part of that era went into my cards and, Do you feel that we are at, I I always notice some styles on CNN and things like that. Sometimes women are wearing, there'll be months where I see no jewelry on the people that are talking. And then other times they're back to earrings or they're back to pendants. Um, I've noticed earrings are back in right now. Long dangly earrings that some of the, the, the talking heads are using and that always makes me aware I always say with tarot being a reader I know the styles or them what's going to happen just by the questions and the inflow of the kind of people getting back to um, the logic of this these new styles that you have that have less embellishment but more flow is this what is friend right now or you know, not I, i've always created for myself things that i like mm. to wear and then i've been lucky you know the other people like them as well so and i always find that what i really desire or want to wear or find or hunt for i'm a little ahead of the time the time mm-hmm. but then why are you making so many things not <laughs> embellished is well, that i mean do, that right I now do both able- Believe me, I do both, but I think, you know, just in general, a lot of people are afraid to stand out, you know, be afraid to be so flamboyant, afraid of color. I mean, I, I sell in New York City, black is still black, you know, it's a protective mechanism, but 
as far as we came from the hippie era, we wanted to be different. We wanted the individuality. We wanted to hunt for something, you know, unique. And right. if we had to make it, we made it. Um, so, so I do see trends. I love to observe trends like you do. I mean, that's why we love tapping in, right? Which mm -hmm. we're always tapping into the energy. And I, I was very surprised to see this homogenized look with young women, especially that they all wanted that same outfit, mean? the same jeans and the same look. And oh, for so long, for so long. And then women, and when I work very closely with women, how women feel about themselves, and the whole self-esteem issue is huge. Whether you're gorge, a gorgeous model or you know, or worried about your weight, it's uh, women pick on themselves so much. And the choices, you know, lots of times they're insecure about sometimes once in a while it's refreshing. A woman knows her color, she, how she wants to feel, the length of the jacket, all of that. I'm always learning by working very hands on with women. But lots of times you want to get them to try on something. So, you know, if I'm there with them, you know, let's try something different. You don't need that same style anymore. And they feel like a goddess, you know, once they try. It's a, I admire the salespeople that work with women, especially in this store. They have to be very psychic and intuitive. They only get this one chance to make the person feel comfortable, to make them trust them, right? To pick out. And it's work lots of time shopping for these, <laughs> for people like this. So, you know, they have a certain specific occasions and whatever. But I, I'm learning as I go, and I can tell you know you can tell someone's style if 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 they're aware of their style. That's very important. We're all different. We all have different rising signs. We all have different colors. You know that make us come alive or calm us down. What are your favorite colors to work with right now? Do you have any? I've been working. I, mean, you... under, I think you know as the world had become kind of dark and scary. I got brighter in my palette. Um, ah, so you went opposite. Yeah, and, and I'm always as surprised, you know, to see what comes out. So um, I've been working just lately. I might be doing a new tarot deck. You know, I would never say never. I, it's a lot of work, right, to do seventy-eight cards. <laughs> but once what is your most what is your most recent uh, tarot deck? Um, I. We just came out with the Intuition Oracle, which is an oracle. It's 52 cards. Um, just came out for, for Sterling Ethos as the publisher. And I loved working. That was kind of paper and pen and ink and um, magic markers, those kind of techniques. Smaller pieces when I do paper. Enchanted Tarot, and I did the Enchanted Love Tarot, I guess, in 2005. And that was all fabric and that was all about relationships and love so there's always you know, a lot to explore you know the, the thing i as a tarot card reader that i am absolutely passionate about not only is the artwork but the smell of the ink <laughs> and the paper that yeah. it's put on because if it's flimsy or if it's if it's too Thin, then you know it's not going to last. No. And a quality paper with beautiful ink, to me, as well as the art, represents the quality of the cards. Yes. Because they have to be able to fall in place in my hands in such a way that the entire experience of reading comes together. Yeah, I mean, you're connecting your mind and your body and connecting with your client. I, I, as um, creators, lots of times we don't have that, that final say working with the publisher. You know, it comes down to dollars and cents. The price of paper has gone up so high. Yeah. Um, there's importing issues. There's, you know, size of the book issue. We have packaged ourselves many of our projects. And I do know a lot about printing and, and about paper stock and all of that. Um, our Intuition Oracle has a, they're very flexible and they have a, a strong uh, varnish on them. Some of them, I, you know, I wish were thicker. And then some of them are, we have our Creativity Oracle. It's very thick and people love it. 
you know, people are very specific about the size of the cards and people know a lot <laughs> like you of, of what you want it to feel like. And it's very important. We, and to we, be a, a right to be approximately just a little bigger than the size of the hand. Yeah. Not not so big that they become clumsy. Yeah, we did we redid our enchanted tarot. They're quite large cards. And of course, as the artist, I like seeing them bigger. And I have small hands. Beautiful, yeah. I have, no, I have no problem shuffling them. You know, I don't like, you know, ripping through them, you know, like a a Las Vegas <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> I'm very, you know, I handle them. They're, you have to be careful with your cards. You know, don't be too rough with your cards. They are paper, after all, um, and you want it to last. I, I luckily, you know, being the creator, I have access to as many decks as I want. <laughs> so if it wears right. out, I can grab a new one. But what's nice about a deck that you've used for a long time, it has the energy of all mm -hmm. of yes. your hands and all the questions and all the love and situations. Go ahead. I, I always say that um, when it comes to tarot, first I get to know it like a friend and I absorb its artwork. And then it's just basically about touching it. Mm. I can almost just feel what it is by touching it and not even barely even looking at it. But I but the but it's like getting to know a new person you you yes. ab you absorb their presence you absorb their energy you absorb what they wear and what they